What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Fans Toys Warthog, their version of a Masterpiece Power Glide. So this is the next in the series of mini bots from Fans Toys and I was pretty excited to look at this because I've liked their mini bots so far. Let's take a look at the G1 cartoon and Fans Toys has really nailed the look of Power Glide here, even down to the feet. I think they did a good job kind of getting that look. The legs are always tough because there's lots of junk in the legs and there is a little bit of junk here on the back um, but overall it's a pretty well done version of Power Glide as far as the proportions and the sculpt are concerned. It does have some nice paint on it. got a glossy red all throughout the body. There are some paint differences. There's some lighter and darker reds on him and I'm not sure why that's occurred. You could just see it right here on the leg. These bits are darker red, whereas this is a lighter red. And that kind of continues throughout. It doesn't really bother me unless it's under my my lights here, but um, that is something to know, is the colors, they do seem to vary slightly between the reds. You have a pearlescent white here for the arms and the thighs, which looks really good. Metallic blue paint here, yellow paint there. All that looks really nice. And then metallic blue for the eyes, that also looks really good. Let's take a look at his articulation. The head is on a rotating swivel. It does got a little bit up and a little bit down, not much. Rotates around. You can also rotate the face, which is part of the transformation, but um, not really intended for articulation. The shoulders rotate, rotate around on a friction joint there and go up to there on the shoulder. Elbows are double jointed, so you get the full bend out of those. Wrists can rotate. You have a single pin for the hand, which is how Fans Toys has done all of their mini bots is a single pin. So you can't point with these guys, unfortunately. Rotation at the waist, pretty much all the way around. You have ab crunch. It's using this transformation joint there. Um, if you go too far, it will kind of, you know, un start unpegging. This is what's holding it together. There's a peg and a notch. Um, it's relatively easy to undo. So you want to, when you first get it, kind of give it a push down. Um, and then things will start coming apart here. So you just got to give it a push together. One of my issues, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but one of my issues is some of these panels like to pop apart. Continuing down, you have hip skirts here. You can move them out of the way. They're on the side. Actually, when you first get it, you're going to pull this hip skirt down and into the uh, outside of this thigh, but to articulate, you can move that out of the way. The leg will go up to there on a friction joint, back to there, out to the side. If you get this one out as much as you can, get it up to there. Rotation at the thigh around universal. We have a, the knee is really interesting. So it's actually a joint back here. So you can see that joint, right? It's, it's very tight. And you can get it 90 degrees, so you don't need the bottom joint. You, you don't have to pull it out to, to use it. During the unboxing, I thought you did need to pull it out. You don't. You can really just bend it here, but you have to make sure you're bending at the upper joint. It does get 90 degrees. You could probably pull this out and get a little bit more. Um, it's very hard to get back in, though. So you only get a little bit out of that extra. To me, that's not really worth it because now putting it back in, kind of a pain. It, it really gets stuck. Uh, and it, there's a lot of uh, lube to get this to go in and out. There we go. So really the best way is just kind of hold it, push down. Uh, but again, you don't need to pull those joints out to use the, the knee. You can get 90 degrees just from this top one. Continuing down, you have a ankle tilt here. It's very tight. Um, also, this piece here likes to um, flop out sometimes, uh, but the ankle tilts right here on that screw. So it goes a little bit that way, a little bit this way, obviously up and down on this joint here. Um, I just wish this locked in place. There's nothing that locks it. Um, so you can end up kind of opening it. Mine stays okay. Uh, it's just a, a little annoyance there on that joint. All right, one of the gimmicks you get here with this guy is the opening chest. I recommend getting a spudger because you want to get it right in here in this little spot. Otherwise, it's hard to get that door open. But open it up, you get a nicely painted 
gunmetal gray with the heart painted there from that one scene, the one episode where he was with his girlfriend, Astoria. This one is from the DX9 version of Powerglide, but you can recreate that scene if you have this or another version of Astoria. Now you do get some nice accessories here. You get his blaster done in that same pearlescent paint, nicely sculpted. That will fit into his hand. There's a little tab on the back, so you're just basically sliding it into the back of his palm. Close it up, and that works pretty nicely. You also get the mask from the Hoist Goes of Hollywood episode. Pretty much the same as the mask that we got with their version of Hoist Hitch. Obviously, design changed to fit this guy. So if you rotate the face around and get that rotated all the way to the back. And you might need a spudge or something to get it rotated because it can be a little tricky. But you can see there's that little slot there and that's where this fits in. So you can see there's two on the top and two on the bottom. Those are going to fit right into those slots and now you can be recreate that scene. There you go. Not bad. Uh, we also get a flight stand here, a flight stand adapter, not the flight stand itself. And you can use that here in robot mode. So you get this piece right here. And you gotta use this Fans Toys stand, which is actually not a great stand to be honest. It doesn't work very well. But you're gonna take this, and this is gonna fit right into his uh, butt here. So there's a little slot right there, and then this is going to fit over here. There's a little tab on the bottom. So you get that pegged in. And then this is going to slide into here. And now you can have him kind of flying on the flight stand, or you can have him kind of jumping or whatever. Whatever you want. And for some quick size comparisons, there it is next to the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime and the Fans Toys Sea Spray, another one of their mini bots. Uh, fits in nicely. It's a little bit taller than the other mini bots they've produced so far, uh, but there you go for a sense of size. And here's a comparison I think most people want to see next to the DX9 Power Glide or Rick Tofen is what they call him. And you can see he's much taller than this guy here. Um, he also transforms into a bigger alt mode, which we'll see a little bit later, but you can see um, some similarities, but definitely a different take on the design overall. Now, we are going to do a full comparison on these two in a separate video, so I don't want to spend too much time here, but I just want to at least show you how they look next to each other. All right, now let's get Warthog transformed into his airplane mode. And forewarning here, this is a relatively complex transformation, a lot of intricate parts. So I'm going to do my best to show you everything on camera, but there might be parts where it's just too difficult to show you. But let's start on the back here. Easy part, fold these panels back on these double hinges. Gives you a little bit of room. Lift up the arm. We're going to open up this panel right here on the bottom of the arm. I need to fold this out. I'm going to lift open this panel. Open up this double hinge to get the arm out there. Fold your hand inwards into the cavity and then close that up. We're going to lift the arm up. This is going to fold back over itself basically to double hinge onto the arm. And then this is going to fold down on over the uh, top of the elbow or the shoulder. And rotate this this way and then you can come to the bottom here and close this panel back up. And then this is going to tab right here. There's a little notch on the wing. This is one of those things I have a hard time showing you, but that just clips in right there. All right, so same thing on this side. We'll do that off camera and be right back. All right now we get the arms taken care of. We can take care of the upper body and the wings. So go ahead and push out on this wing to detach it from here. Then we're going to take this and detach this from here. If you lift up on this little panel here and fold it straight, it'll release this whole wing. So that can kind of sit loose like that. We're going to take this wing and we'll take care of all this. So 
come to the bottom here and we're going to open up this panel right here and we're going to flip this around so you're going to want to straighten that out oops straighten that out and let that sit here for now flip this up over and then you're going to slot this in here so you want to slide this wing down and now this is going to clip into where that slid down from kind of a neat little trick there right now you're going to take this wing it's going to come down and clip back in where that was sitting and make sure this is all straight this panel here and it's pushed in all the way and this piece here is going to move again on you so I would actually recommend just leave that down for now because that's going to give you a little space for later. All right, so that's one wing done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side off camera. We'll be right back. All right, now that we have both wings done, we can take care of this upper body here. And it's going to start to get panel-y and uh, it's going to look kind of floppy. But go ahead and open these up. We're going to pull away on the bottom of the chest. And basically it opens up this ab crunch piece here and this back ab crunch piece here. These pieces on the side are actually going to come down and sit right there. And we can just leave these wings along the side now. So come to here. We're going to open up this and this panel. We're going to pull up on this whole piece. It's on a double hinge here. There's a lot of double hinges here. And you can see that extended that part all the way out, the nose cone. You take the face, rotate that around uh, 180 degrees. So you get that open side on the bottom. Come to here, we're going to flip this panel out, flip this gun out, and flip this out. You can flatten the nose cone. And then we're going to bring this back down. And it's going to tab into here. And again, this is another piece that might move on you. So just get it on there for now. We can always adjust it at the end. But it should look like that. Take this panel. It's going to lift up. I'm going to rotate this around. 180 degrees. Come to the inside. You're going to fold this. You can stick a finger in there. Fold that over all the way until it's flat. And then, yeah, and like I mentioned, this tends to pop out. Can be a little bit frustrating, but get that back on there. Fold that down, fold this down. That's your cockpit. Open up this nose piece here, and actually, it's easier if you have this open. Open up this, flip this around, and that makes the little bump on the nose. You don't have to have that, but you can. And then push that back together, push this back together. And there's your nose cone. We're going to take this and tab this panel together. Leave these out for now. It's going to come back to here. We're going to line all this up. And when you have this together, then you can push these two panels in on both sides. That's going to kind of hold all of this together. Right. So that's the top of the fuselage in a pretty good shape. So now let's take care of this bottom area. And you have to pull these legs down on these joints. It's not feel good, but you got to do it. So I'll show you. Lift up these hip skirts. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. These hips have to drop down. It's kind of tight the first time you do it. Now it's a little bit looser, so it's a little bit easier. But basically, you're going to pull those down. These are going to end up sitting like this. So might as well do that now. Or sorry, this way. <clears throat> and you can pull down on these extending leg pieces. Get those a little bit more out of your way. So just leave those like that. This wing is going to come down. And again, this might come out on you. But there's a little tab right here. And that's going to peg in to the bottom of the hip skirt. Over here on the side, there's a little 
circle notch to stick the wing and then you come to here bring this down make sure it actually tabs in it's actually kind of challenging to get this perfectly lined up here there we go so you should feel it actually lock in place like I said you can leave this up it's going to give you a little bit of room to work All right, same on this side lift up this panel get this positioned and then close this down and that'll lock that in place all right, so there's our wings. Not too bad looking. Getting there. All right, so open up this on this side. Open up this side. And we're going to lift up right here. This is on a slider up and down. We're going to rotate that around. We're going to bend here. And this is very unclear in the Fans Toys video. But you want to bend here. And you want to lift up on here. And this has to end up bending outwards. If you don't have this folded all the way out, you'll have trouble. But basically, make sure you have the painted side up. There we go. So you had to extend that all the way up. And now we can fold that over. Um, if you don't do it that way, you'll have a hard time. And it wasn't very clear, honestly, in the, in the Fans Toys video. All right. Rotate this so that you have the armature facing upwards, so you have it rotating like this. We're going to take this panel and fold this to the inside. Uh, make sure you have this in the bottom. This is going to fold inwards and hide in there. This is the fake engine in robot mode. Yes, they have a faux part there. All right, so you can just leave that like this. We're going to do the same thing on this side, get it configured where you have this panel sticking out here and then the engine looking like this, basically rotate it up. So I'm just showing you the configuration so you can get it into that configuration. All right now that we have both of those panels in place, we can take care of this back fuselage area and this is the hard part. Yes, we haven't done the hard part yet. So this little panel right here is going to fit its way into here. And it, it is a tough fit, but you got to get this right in here. Uh, make sure you have this configured just like that. You've got the flat side on the front right here, and then you've got this armature sticking up and the, and the engine at an angle. It really has to be exactly like that or you're going to have trouble with this whole section. All right, so get that piece in there on the other side. Get that piece inserted. And then you're going to take all of this and squeeze it together. There's a couple of tabs along the way, and um, you detach the wing. We'll have to put that back. And this is the part, you know, it's not fun. It just, it's got a lot of little tabs. And this actually has a tab on the bottom, too. So those are going to come together. All right, there we go for that one. Come to the top, and get this tab in. Get this one in. This one's kind of tough because it's between the engines. We got this together. It really is a challenge to get it all squeezed together, but that's how it should look. So now we will take care of, we can put this back actually. So on the bottom here, lift up this flap, line this in here, and then tab that in. And this one, and actually it might even be easier to do the wings after you do that front fuselage section. You're probably gonna knock it out anyway. You might as well do it after. It actually seems more solid once you do that. Uh, now you can fold these flaps down and in place you're just going to tab in right there. Make sure these wings are straight and you know the whole top side is even. All right. Last but not least we're going to take care of these wing sections. So straighten these up so the engines look straight basically. We're going to open up these feet. So come to the bottom, we're going to unpeg this, unpeg that, Those that's pegged right there, this is pegged right in that circle. Fold this down, that ends up giving you the wheel. You can fold this to the outside, fold this to the outside. This is going to come out on a hinge, and then this is going to fold outwards to there, and then it's going to come back down and tab in. And that's one rear wing section, okay? So I'm going to do the other one off camera, I'll be right back.
All right, now that we have both tail sections folded out, you can kind of see how this is going to go. There's a tab and a notch right there. And then these are going to peg together. So get those folded down. And this has got to go in and rotate. And this is going to rotate as well. Get it pegged in and then rotate it. Otherwise, it'll be hard to find the spot. But once you get those lined up, you can squeeze that together, squeeze that tail section together. Give that a nice squeeze. Oh, and we lost that. And final steps here, we're going to come to the bottom. We're going to fold out this landing gear here. There's one right here as well. These might be tight when you first get it, so you might need a spudger. And then this one right here on the back. And there we have Warthog in his jet mode. Quite a feat to get there, but it does look good. Pretty nice details, and overall the size of this is actually pretty impressive that it went from that mini robot to this kind of larger jet. Here's the back. Um, some of the panels are hard to kind of fit together, and I just wanted to clarify this engine actually has to end up pushed back down so it's not extended on this die cast arm. Otherwise you have trouble fitting some of the panels together. I cleaned that up off camera, but just want to let you know that. Um, I can't get this one perfectly together. You can see there's a tiny little gap there, but overall they come together. Um, it does like to, like, just the panels are fiddly here and there, uh, but I do like the look of it. Let's take a look at the cartoon image as well as an image of the actual vehicle that this is based off of. And I think they went for a more realistic vehicle look versus the cartoon look. Um, but either way, I think it's a good looking jet mode. It's just a little bit fiddly overall. Now, it does have some features here, so we can actually open up the cockpit here. And there is a lot of uh, lube that's along, especially on the leg section, so he does tend to get slippery once you get him transformed. But if you open that up, you'll see there's a little cockpit there. And you can actually take the spike from MP10, just bend the legs a little bit here, get those down into the cockpit, bring that back down, and then he can sit inside there. And that's pretty cool. You can fly along inside of Power Glide. I don't know if they intended for that or if that was just accidental, but it does fit in there. Um, we also can use the display stand that I showed you earlier. So you have this adapter. And this one doesn't work as well as the robot mode one, but you're going to bring in the flight stand here. This tab's going to go towards the inside. You're going to slide that in. And make sure you lock this. And then on the bottom here, you have a tab, a slot, and then this tab is going to fit on top of this. And just peg in right here. It doesn't fit very securely, to be honest. Um, I've had a hard time getting it to stay. It's sitting on there, but not very securely. Any little bump, it's going to pop off of there. So I don't know if I would trust this here. The other thing is this stand, and this has nothing to do with this figure, but this stand, the next locking point is here, and that's just too aggressive of an angle. We needed something in the middle, right? So that, and if you do it up, then it really doesn't work because it just can't hold the weight. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't leave it on the shelf like this. If I was gonna put it on the shelf, I'd probably put it straight, flat, so that it's you know, not falling off. Uh, but yeah, not the best stand. Nice that they included the adapter, but I just don't think the stand works all that well. And one other feature here in the jet mode is you can store the gun. There's a little slot right there. There's a tab on the side of the gun. Uh, really doesn't do anything else other than allow you to store it. So nice little spot for it. And then you have a little gun sticking out on the wing. Good idea. And for size comparison, there it is next to MP52 Starscream, another jet. And you can see it's a pretty big jet. Um, the wingspan is actually wider than MP52. The height is obviously shorter. Lengthwise, it comes up to basically the end of the cockpit, and then there's a nose in front. So as far as the jet's concerned, it's a pretty nice size. 
I don't know if it's to scale, but I do like the fact that it fits um, in terms of scale with other jets. And because it's tradition on this channel, there it is next to MP10 Optimus Prime. And then we also have the Fans Toys version of Dune Rider. And fits in pretty nicely. He is a minibot after all, but salt mode, pretty big here. There you go. So final recommendations on the Fans Toys Warthog. And this one is a mixed bag for me. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5. It's going to be a partial recommendation. And let me explain. I really like the way it looks in robot mode and in jet mode. They nail the look of Power Glide. And, and I think overall the paint and the, the aesthetic of it is really well done. The jet mode, I really like how they went for a, a realistic looking jet versus a chibi looking um, jet. It just really makes it more attractive and realistic but where this thing falls down for me is some of the engineering choices and design choices really make this figure not very fun to play with so in robot mode the knees are really and the ankles are really where the problems lie there are two joints in here if you didn't figure it out already there's a rotation joint at the top and then a rotation joint down here in the bottom. And getting that kind of lined up and, and oriented the way you want as you're messing with it is very kind of frustrating. This joint here for the knee bend is actually really tight, but the one below is loose. So that one ends up popping out as you bend the knee and you don't want it to because it just, you know, causes a... It, it doesn't... It's not where you want to articulate it. So that is not really a well-designed joint. And then this joint here, um, mine stays in the, in the direction I have it. But, you know, it's just a strange thing. Like, why not just put a lock for this, right? Like a clip or something that locks that in place so you're not struggling with it. Some of these side panels also, this little one tends to pop out on me as you're messing with it. Now, if you're just displaying it and putting it there, I think you'll be fine because it does display really well. Uh, transformations also really not very fun. I think they just overly complicated lots of panels um, and not something that you'd want to do over and over. So if you're planning to just display this in robot mode or display it in jet mode, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll really like it. If you're planning to flip it back and forth or you're planning to mess with it, articulate it, I think that's where the frustrations lie. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.